So in this chapter, we're going to talk about the embedded rebellion and ethical response in an age of absurdity. According to myth of Sisyphus 21, what is absurd is the confrontation of this irrational and wild longing for clarity whose call echoes in humans' heart. And now for Albert Camus, absurdity represented the inescapable circumstance of human existence, including an unresolvable tension between the human need for clarity and the fact that sometimes life doesn't make sense. The absurd was a situated concern for Camus. As the historical moment continued to rapidly change, his understanding of the term was extended to include human reaction in the midst of absurdity, propelling him into a conversation about a rebellion. The background theory of absurdity informed all of the Camus in judgment with his historical moments. He was consistently interested in how the metaphor of absurd revealed itself in everyday life and what response was required in the midst of absurd condition. So, for Camus, rebellion was an act against the nonsense of his own time and represented an effort to impose order on a chaotic world. So, the Black, the Just Assassins, and the Rebel are the series that explored Camus' understanding about rebellion as an ethical response of the experience of existential homelessness in an age of absurdity. Each section begins with a narrative summary of the main points and the character of the story, which is followed by a narrative in judgment demonstrating how each word textured an understanding of the metaphor of the rebellion. Finally, through the synthesis of metaphors explored in this chapter, Camus's unique contribution to the theory of the communication ethic emerged. The unity of contraries, Martin Buber wrote, it is only when reality is turned into a logic and A and non-A there no longer dwell together that we get determinism and indeterminism, a doctrine of predestination and a doctrine of freedom, each excluding the other. According to a logical conception of truth, only one of two contraries can be true, but in the reality of life as one lives it, they are inseparable. The unity of contraries is the mystery at the innermost core of the dialogue. When one is caught in tension of differing perspective, one's ability to discover meaning in between these two different ways of living is vital. Ilul saw a dialectical tension between the way the world appears and the way one wishes the world to be. With his text, The Humiliation of the Word, Ilul provided some helpful language that contributes to fuller understanding of Barber unity of contraries. For example, also one may experience chaos in daily lives, which may end the reality. One can still be comforted by the fact that God is in control of all things, so basically they believe God is exist. Neither Barber or Elo would find this religious example troubling, yet Camus' own philosophical belief would lead him to call his reach for a religious release philosophical suicide. As illustrated in the previous chapter, Camus recognized the risk of being caught within the contradiction of an age of absurdity. Living in the given era, one human being doesn't directly control the larger circumstance that can cause a historical moment to change. Therefore, one may desire that things remain as they were while at the same time confronting changes that beyond of her or his control. In the preface of the first English edition of the myth of Sisyphus, Camus connected rebellion to the absurd. For me, the myth of Sisyphus marks the beginning of an idea which I was to pursue in a rebel. In the myth of Sisyphus, Camus provided an introduction to rebellion, a concept he would address in greater detail in his second cycle of work. One and only coherent philosophical position is thus revolt. It is constant confrontation between man and his own obscurity. It is insistent upon the impossible transparency. It is challenges the world anew every second. Just as danger provided man the unique opportunity of seizing awareness, so metaphysical revolt extends awareness to the whole of experience. It is constant presence of man in his own eyes. For Camus, absurdity is phenomenological reality, and humanities respond to it, and in judgment with that reality represent a hermeneutic turn. When the new understandings and opportunities for living occur, 
one is confronted with the hermeneutic dimension of the metaphors of absurdity and rebellion. In the context of an absurd existence, one's only option is to respond through to existential rebellion, thus revealing that rebellion itself can become an entrance to something else. Camus provides a very lovable example of existential rebellion in his novel The Plague by focusing upon the character's various response to a medical epidemic. The author captures both the action and spirit necessary for productivity at its absurdity. The absurd circumstance provides the background against which the action takes place. The focus is not upon the absurdity of the town, but upon the response of rebellion that are necessary in order for human beings to make a difference and create their own meaning in the face of the absurdity. Flake has been subjected to many interpretations throughout the years since its publication. Solomon wrote, An interpretation of the Flake largely depends on one's attitude toward Camus, on his or her perspective, and on what ideological acts he or she wants to green. The central focus of the Jews associates in the assassination of the Grand Duke of Russia. Camus supplies Kaliev, the central character in the Jews assassins, as an example of someone who doped the end but did not prevent him from acting. The, the play explores the justifiable limits of rebellion. The Jews assassins, along with the rebel and the plague, was identified by Camus in his personal notebook as a part of his cycle on rebellion. Camus re- recognized the absurdity of the human experience and the existential ethical response of rebellion is necessary to create meaning in the world. Kaliev provides insight to the inner conflict that can take place in the midst of absurdity. Killing is acceptable but only a certain kind of killing. Revolution is acceptable but even revolutionaries must not cross certain boundaries. Admitting that one took another's life can be just justified, but only if the act is considered in the context of a revolution and not simply labeled murder. Religious assassins still formed in various venues across Europe and North America remains one of the importance of limiting one's action no matter how justifiable and of the contradiction often inherent in revolutionary activities. The Rebel, an essay of men in revolt. In the introduction to The Rebel, first published in 1951, Camus sorted out the existential ethical option available for a rebel. The purpose of this essay is once again to face the reality of the present, which is logical crime, and to examine meticulously the arguments by which it is justified. It is an attempt to understand the time in which we live. The Rebel is divided into five parts. The Rebel, Metaphysical Rebellion, Historical Rebellion, Rebellion in Art, and Thought at the Meridian. The rebel. A rebel, according to Camus, affirms that there are limits and also that he suspects and wishes to preserve the existence of certain things on the side of the borderline. Camus viewed rebellion as essential for human existence. In order to exist, man must rebel, but rebellion must respect the limit it discovers in itself, a limit where minds meet and in meetings begin to exist. Metaphysical rebellion is divided into six sections. Camus emphasized that in one's rebellion, narrative clarity can be established by his protest, the existence of the master against whom he rebelled. He cautioned against placing excessive trust in history itself. In order to fully rebel against the absurdity of the human life, one must accept that history will not provide any existence in the midst of the world of evil and death. Camus wrote, It is not the nobility of the rebellion that illuminates the world today, but nihilism. Historical Rebellion is also divided into six sections. In this part of the essay, Camus insisted that rebellion it is not boundless. In fact, rebellion is, by nature, limited in scope. Camus argued that optimism should center on the human being, in a person capable of rebellion against the forces of history. Optimism should not be directed at the institutions that claims to lead the rebellion, but ultimately result in some form of totalitarianism. In the other sections, Camus explored the tension between reason and experience. 
rebellion and art is divided into three sections. For Camus, all rebel thought is expressed either in rhetoric or in a closed universe. The ideals of rebellion are communicated through both the spoken and written word, as well as through the artist's renderings of life. Camus emphasized this pairing unreflectively as a main concern. Co communicative engagement with this pair lessens its impact on daily life. In order to rebel, one must have an understanding of the ideas that are center of life. Taking action of rebelling in the midst of absurdity is an act of creation that adds content to one's life. Thought at the Meridian is broken into three sections. The first section emphasizes the risk that has always existed in allowing rebellion to lead to a totalitarian regime. Rebellion cut off from its origin and clinically travestied, oscillates on all levels between sacrifice and murder. In the midst of this protest, the challenge came as offered was to respond to the absurd world reflectively and through engagement, to help create it. Camus believed that real generosity toward the future lies in giving all to the present. Hermeneutics is the art of theory of interpretation, as well as a type of philosophy that starts with questions of interpretation. Hermeneutics address questions of interpretation and meaning. Camus wrote, we cannot say that nothing has any meaning, because in doing so, one affirms a value sanctified by an opinion, knowing that everything has a meaning, because the word everything has no meaning for us. Hermeneutics opens possibilities by redirecting one's focus of attention. Embedded rebellion, an ethical response in the face of existential homelessness. When considering how the metaphor of rebellion represents a hermeneutics turn within Camus' understanding of absurdity, it is important to recognize the new ways of understanding human existence in light of metaphorical connections. The goal of Camus it is not identify abstract forms that lack functional purpose in everyday life. Rebellion as a livable philosophy suggests that one is equipped with the proper theoretical background to make decisions in an ever-changing historical moment. Embedded rebellion also connects the metaphor of limits. Though some positions can be held as abstractions, responsibility to other human beings places limits upon the positions one may accept as ethically appropriate. Often these limits force one to work in the context of two apparently contradictory concepts. Conclusion. Rebellion can serve as a livable philosophy through its representation of a commitment to living out the embodied ideals of a particular narrative, as opposed to living according to individualistic preference. When taking action, one must recognize that limits or boundaries are demonstrated by each decision and subsequent action taken. In an abstract age that lacks a single meta-narrative to guide a public and private life, the risk of experiencing existential homelessness are greatly increased.